On Popcross Studios this year, I've designed a whole bunch of different mech armors. Partially that's because designing Iron Man or Gundam inspired suits is a lot of fun, but also partially because the narrator of those episodes, Benny Sharp, is a very entertaining character to write and voice. And of course, more importantly, lots of people in the comments seem to really enjoy him. But today I wanted to try a new kind of armor series, designing fantasy armors, like something you'd see in Dungeons and Dragons or something like that. And I figured if I'm trying out a new armor series, maybe I should try out a new narrator as well. Got a voice that I've been working on that I think is gonna work pretty well for today. So let's see if today's video is worth turning into a series or if it'll just be a one-off. Let's go. Hit like! If you want, subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. Ah, hello and welcome to my shop. I see you have keen eye for excellently crafted armor. Vasilia Kuznet at your service. And let me tell you, you could not have come to a better place to find exemplary armor. Many very powerful people have entrusted me to design armor for them, including the very entity who watches over this world. Impressive, yes? I mean, to be perfectly honest, it is partially because he was friend of mine before he became a god, but still, I'd say an accolade worth bragging about, yes? But if that's not enough for you, I even recently designed armor for the very elements themselves. You see, a few weeks ago, four travelers came to me, very good looking group by the way, not unlike yourself. They approach and say we are the embodiment of the four elements, earth, wind, fire and water. I say, wow, that's quite impressive. What is it you'd like from my shop today? They say, would you not like us to prove the claim we've just made? I said, no, that's okay. Either you are what you say, and that's very nice for you, or you are not, and I have no interest in seeing you embarrass yourself by failing to prove the claim. Of course, soon after they showed me their abilities anyway. It was quite impressive, but I think they were really just looking for an excuse to show off. Which I cannot judge them for. I mean, you have been in my shop for a few minutes now and I have not let you get a word in because I am busy bragging to you about all the wonderful armors I've designed in the past. Obviously, I'm not one to shy away from self-aggrandizing. Anyway, the first one that I got down to work on was the embodiment of Fire's armor. She was a fiery woman, which is what you'd likely assume from who she was. She was fast and confident and fierce in battle and preferred mid-sized dual-wield weapons. That was particularly appealing to me because that is my favorite kind of weapon to design. I forged her blades from enchanted steels that I made using parts of the hide of a glowing heat beast. This was not easy to acquire. Well, it was for me but would not be for most. I may not be the toughest rock on the mountain, but with one of my own armors on, the heat beast had no opportunity to harm me, because as I say, my armors are quite durable. Anyway, I also made the armor completely fireproof to ensure her abilities could not damage it. I had designed her plating to cover her full arms, but she elected not to wear part of it as she said she enjoyed getting a few battle scars to show off her might. She has a few already and let me tell you, the look really works for her. She is tough looking lady, but even more so now that she wears a Vasilia original armor. The next armor was for the embodiment of Earth. He was big, strong, muscular man. He already looked like a mountain, but I needed to make him appear more so. And since he was incredibly strong, I was able to use some of my heaviest materials. Part of his armor was forged with rocks and stones, and I coated it in a thin layer of metal. Other sections were made from flesh from a rampaging hammer tail. This flesh was not something I can claim I gathered myself. I bought it off one of the few other magic armorers I knew years back before he was killed for his practice. You see, it used to be very frowned upon to invoke any kind of magic by the god who used to watch over this world. That old god was cruel being who tried to destroy my shops multiple times. But I was always able to best him, do you know why? Because I have very impressive armor. Also, gods are significantly less powerful than you'd think. They can control weather and tame monsters and whatnot, but nothing unmanageable to beat. Anyway, Earth Elemental Man already had incredibly durable skin, 
but he said he wanted armor that was even tougher than he was. He wanted to be fully covered and look almost like towering statue when he stood still. And I made it so. This man could now get hit with the full force of a bold fist slinger dragon and his armor would remain intact. He would likely be turned to jelly, but the armor would be okay. For a weapon, he wanted something big, and when I asked him how big, he said again, big. So I designed him hammer with the same elements for his armor, and the mallet was nearly as large as his body. I could not even come close to lifting thing myself, but he swung it with one hand like it was child's plaything. When he swings it, he can channel his elemental skills through it and hit earth with such force that he can level a mountain. Well, maybe not mountain, but small hill, still impressive. The few parts of the suit that are not metal, stone or dragon hide are very durable leather of my own making. I could have coated these parts in more metal or stone, but I thought it needed a pop of color. If something is all grey and bland, it's, it's just boring to look at. Needs some kind of other color in there to break up the look. Of course the armor being sturdy and battle ready and all this, it, it is important, yes? But what is the point of wearing armor if you don't look fantastically good in it, huh? My armors will not just keep you safe, but will keep the eyes of the best looking ladies and gentlemen upon you while you wear them. This is desirable, yes? The next armor was for the embodiment of water. She was very elegant and graceful woman. While her group was in my village waiting for their armor to be crafted, I often spotted her doing slow movement exercises to keep her body in flow. I knew I needed to make her an armor that would not hinder her movement in any way. I also wanted one that would match her grace, no sharp edges, something very curvy and smooth. I was able to imbue enchanted crystalline water into the armor, meaning since she could control the movement of water, she could control the metal of the armor with her mind and make her able to leap remarkable heights so long as she wore the armor. I also wanted to leave her legs unhindered with armor, but still protect them as she was not as thick skinned as her rocky friend. So I made her two very large armor plates that swung out around her legs, so it would be very difficult for someone to hit her from a distance with a projectile. The pants for the suit were also made from a fairly sturdy material that is not easily stabbed through with a blade, but still I warned her to do her best to avoid being struck in the legs. She also insisted on having a gap in the helmet for her hair to stick out. Normally I'd advise against this, but I could not blame her. She had the most elegant flowing hair you've ever seen. I just wanted to stare at it for hours, it moved like the very water she controlled. For weapon, she didn't want much, just short sword. I said, okay, if you want small weapon, I will make the best small weapon I've ever crafted. I built her small blade to match her armor. It was rounded, smooth and forged with same crystalline water. I also made it so it was light as feather. She could move with it in her hand as though she was holding nothing at all. The helmet that I ended up making, with the slit in the top for her hair, was smoothest I've ever crafted, but they may have made the eye holes a bit too large. They would have been sufficient at a smaller scale, but I could not help myself. The woman's eyes were too gorgeous to hide away from the world, they needed to be seen by everyone. This woman was so beautiful I tried to convince my brother Voslo to ask her to go with him to the village's weekly bonfire. He did so, but she refused, saying her only mate is destined to be the sea. I don't know what this means, but if she'd rather have fishy ocean husband than my brother, that is her loss. But still, it will be quite some time before Voslo and I forget how pretty Water Lady was. Especially once she was wearing a Vasilia original armor. Last armor I made was for the embodiment of air. He was very slender man and very agile as well. He didn't even want a melee weapon, instead he wanted throwing knives as he could toss them and then bend the air around them to ensure that they hit their intended targets. 
he could even bring them back to himself to throw again. It was quite impressive to behold. For this suit I went for a classic lightweight armor. He was least durable of his allies so he needed to be almost fully protected, but the armor had to allow for his movements to be unhindered as well. I made the armor thin, aerodynamic and covered him everywhere except his eyes and shoulders to ensure full range of movement for his arms for throwing and manipulating the air. While designing the armor the men actually gave very interesting insights and suggestions on how to proceed. The others just left me to my work, but Air seemed very interested in the process. He was a very intelligent man, quite humorous as well. Because of his sociable personality, I wanted to insist on colorful design that matched his attitude, but he wanted otherwise. He said he wanted very limited colors so he could be less conspicuous. I thought it was a bit of a shame, but was willing to do as he asked, and I always appreciate client who knows what they want. It does make my job much easier. Anyway, I used the hide of an albino iron plated sky dragon for the base of the metal and had intended to color it but instead left it mostly as it was as requested. This was possibly the rarest material I used for any of the armors as albino sky dragons are incredibly rare to come across. The only reason I had any of its hide was because of my godly friend, who traded it to me as part of a payment for an armor he'd had me design for a friend of his, out of an American shielded wyvern. In fact many of the more rare materials I use nowadays have been given to me by him. It's always good to have a god on your side. Anyway, the air elemental's armor turned out to be one of the lightest I've ever made, which you know, it had to have something good about it because I didn't say this to him but it was probably the least pretty of the four that I made. But sometimes when the client gets exactly what they want, exactly what they want is less artistic than the crafter would like. The group soon after paid me a generous sum of gold and was on their way to do who knows what. That was quite a fun project for me, quite memorable. I don't know if it's obvious, but I very much enjoy my work, and even more so talking about my work. So what do you think? Would you like to hear more? Well that was super fun for me, so I'm definitely into the idea of making this into a series or at least doing a few more episodes of it. But of course that'll only happen if all you watching enjoyed it as well. So let me know in the comments, should I do more of this? And if so, what else should I turn into fantasy armors? I could use pop culture characters like I do for my mech armor episodes, or I could even do more elements, like the different definition of elements where I could use different kinds of minerals like do a gold armor or something like that. Or it could even be cool to use fictional pop culture elements like Superman's kryptonite or adamantium or energon, turn those into armors, I think that could be fun as well, but let me know what you all want to see in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, maybe you want to check out some of the mech armor episodes. The two best ones are probably the second episode of famous animated characters as mech armors and the Ben 10 mech armors episode. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or uplifting note, and the thought I want to leave people with today is think about the last time you said the words I am and then what followed it. And try to make sure that any time you say I am something, it's something positive, even if you don't think you're that thing yet. Avoid saying things like I am lazy, I am clumsy, I am a bad artist. The more you say things like that, the more true it's going to end up being. So if you find yourself about to say something that's a negative I am, replace it with something positive, even the opposite of what you were just gonna say. Say I am coordinated, I am a fantastic artist. Making your I am's always positive is gonna help you make those things true or more true than they are now. Hope that's helpful to someone out there. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I love you all and I'll see you all in the next episode on Friday, which is going to be a sort of year in review episode of Popcross Studios art and an update on what's to come next with Multiverse Tales. I'll see y'all there. Goodbye.